Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I say to whatever, whatever, whatever. Hello, my dear friend. It's me, Bishop John R. Stevens, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Shepherd's Heart. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so very much for this wonderful and awesome day that you've made. We have chosen to rejoice and be glad in this day. Thank you for your provision and for protection. Thank you for taking care of our every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for healing our bodies and our minds. We thank you so, so very, very much for the table that you've prepared before us, even in the presence of our enemies. Thank you for leading and guiding us by your spirit. We give you glory and we give you praise for that. Now, Father, as we move forward into the broadcast, we give you glory and we give you praise. We ask that you would shine your light on things that are hidden from us. Holy Spirit, be the teacher, leader, and guide that you are. You are the knower. So we come to you for answers today. Wherever there's a question, Please don't leave that question unanswered today. Make everything plain, make it clear so that we don't walk away seeing men as trees walking today. Father, again, we give you glory, we give you praise. I thank you for the anointing that rests upon my life to preach and teach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with power and authority. I give you glory and I give you praise as we walk through the pages of the word of God today. We give you glory and praise for it now in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 and amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you for allowing me space and time in your life today. We're still dealing with the subject <laughs> of being consistent and operating in the consistency of the Word of God. Last time we were together, the Holy Spirit had me to say some things to us. The Bible said that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So I repeat things just as Jesus did when he said, verily, verily, I'm, I repeat some things because God wants us to remember. He wants things to sink into our spirit, to get into us. Uh, like so, um, uh, the, the psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you, that I might not sin against you. And so God wants you to hide this in your heart. Don't let the enemy come and steal this word from you in this season. He had me to say the last couple of times we were together, I sense that there's a, a powerful, powerful, catastrophic move about to happen uh, in our midst. And the Lord said the thing that would qualify us in that season would be our ability to be consistent in our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our ability to walk in faith and obedience with God because faith and obedience keep us in right places, right condition, position, and posture to receive from God. And so we talked about, we talked about how in that moment, in that time, uh, that there would be a time of fruitfulness and elevation, fruitfulness and elevation. And so let's look at a verse of scripture as we're dealing with this because the Holy Spirit gave me uh, two verses of scripture to deal with as we talk about the fruitfulness. In Genesis um, 41 and 52, let's look at Genesis 41 and 52, <clears throat> right quick, Genesis 41 and 52 in reference to uh, fruitfulness. Genesis 41 and 52, and the name of the second called he Ephraim, for God, watch this now, for God has called me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And so watch this, so in the land of my affliction, so, so God is saying that there's something catastrophic gonna happen, the move is gonna be catastrophic, it's gonna be a powerful move, while the world see it as, as plagues, we'll see it as miracle signs and wonders, and in that time, we will be fruitful, friend. We will be fruitful in the time of affliction. The next verse of scripture comes out of Psalms 92, Psalms 92. Psalms 92, uh, verse 13 to 15, Psalms 92. <clears throat> when it deals with the fruitfulness, he said this is going to be a, a time of fruitfulness and elevation. Not just fruitfulness, but fruitfulness and elevation. <clears throat> For those who are walking consistently with him. Don't, let's not forget that, okay? Those who walk consistently with him. Psalms 92, 13 and 15. 
Here's what it says. Well, let me read uh, verse 12 as well. The righteous shall flourish. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Watch this now. They shall, they shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing to show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. So you see, friend, <clears throat> the Lord wants you to understand that in this time, those of us who are walking consistently with him, consistently with him, we're going to flourish, friend. We're going to flourish. He also said, watch this, he also said that it would be a Solomon kind of moment. <clears throat> a Solomon kind of moment, meaning, we was in 2 Chronicles chapter 1, verse 7 to 12. A Solomon kind of moment when God visited Solomon. He visited Solomon and asked Solomon what he could do for him. What he, and Solomon responded to him, wisdom. He wanted wisdom. Let me take you over there so you can see 2 Chronicles. Yeah, Second Chronicles chapter one. Let's go over here and look at this so we can so you can see this because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let's look at it. In that, start at verse number seven. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and say unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. You know, often we look at uh, Matthew seven and seven when it says, Ask uh, and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Yes, that word, does, the word does say that, friend, but you have to be walking in a consistent way with God for that thing to come to pass. OK, for that to happen, you can't be shaky in your walk with God and expect to ask, seek and knock. And the, what the word says is going to happen. No, you have to be consistent in your word and in your walk with God to see those things happen. So he asked him, watch this. And Solomon said in verse eight, Solomon said unto God, thou hast shown great mercy unto David, my father, and have made me to reign in his stead. So I want you to hear this. Uh, God is going to choose you over some others. Those who are walking consistent with him will be chosen over others. Watch this now. And have, thou hast shown great mercy unto my father, David, and have made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let, let thy promise uh, unto, unto David my father be established for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Verse 10, look what he says. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before the people, this people, for who can judge this thou people that is so great. Now watch this now because Solomon just qualified himself for something by asking for wisdom. He qualified himself for something by asking for wisdom that he didn't qualify for in the beginning. I'm going to read this next verse and then we're going to talk about that. And God said to Solomon, because this was in thine heart. Look, friend, he said, because this was in your heart. This wasn't just lip service. Just this wasn't something that Solomon said. Remember, men look at the outward uh, of a person, but God looks inward at the heart. He said, because this was in your heart, Solomon, come on, friend, because this was in, what is the condition, position, and posture of your heart right now? Because often we go before God and we say things to God. We say what our lips, but our hearts are somewhere else. Our hearts are somewhere else. God said, you know, you speak good of me, but your heart is far from me. They speak good of me. They say all these wonderful things, but their hearts are far from me. And so we go before God and our hearts are not in the right condition, position and posture when we go before God. Look what he said. Verse 11 again. And God said unto Solomon, because this was in thine heart and thou have not asked for riches, wealth or honor, nor the life of thy enemy, neither yet has asked long life, but have asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself. Watch this. That thou mayest judge my people. Watch this now. Why is he asking for the wisdom so that he can be the right kind of judge for God's people so that he's fit to be the ruler that he's been called to be over God's people. This is powerful stuff now. 
over whom I have made you king. Yes, God made him king, but here the, Solomon is showing that he wants to be king. He, he desires the position. He honors the, the position. He wants to be king. So give me what I need to be a good king. I don't just want to be a king. Help me to be the kind of king that you've called me to be. Friend, this is, this is good stuff. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you, because those of us who walk consistently in concert and in unity with God, in unison with God, we are going to be the people that God is going to choose to set over places of rulership. We are the people. I'm one of the, I'm, I'm, I'm including myself, friend, because I'm pretty consistent. I'm not patting myself on the back, but I'm pretty consistent when it comes to my relationship with God, friend. And so listen now, this is important. Listen, <clears throat> Verse 12, wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth. Watch this, this is important. Because see, Solomon, he, he qualified himself for some things that he didn't qualify for at first. Now watch this now. <laughs> Just because you're a leader don't mean you're going to be wealthy. It don't mean that you can handle other things. But God gave him the wealth that he, that he didn't even ask for because he asked for wisdom. And the wisdom he asked for will help him, watch this, not only be able to be king, but also handle the wealth. And so God gave it to him, watch this, he qualifies by responding with give me wisdom. Friend, you, you disqualify yourself when you go to God and you ask for things. Oh, I feel I rebuke that spirit that's not walking with this, that's not in agreement with this. This is the word of God. This is not something Bishop just coming up with. So I rebuke that spirit now in the name, in the name of Jesus. And so here it is. Solomon qualifies himself for something because he asked for wisdom. And so God says, I'm giving it to you. Even though you didn't ask for it, I'm going to give it to you now. Now, some would say, okay, well, he didn't ask for it. God just gave it to him. Yes, but wisdom qualifies him to have it. Why give him something that he, he can't handle? Because, see, without wisdom, friend, listen, a, a, a person with, with wealth, with money, without wisdom can't make it. There are people who've won the lottery, and in a, in a year or two, they broke. I mean, they won millions and millions of dollars, but because they didn't have the wisdom, friend, on how to invest it, excuse me, on how to invest money, what to do with money. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Listen, look at the, uh, the prodigal son. He asked his father for something that he didn't qualify for and he wasn't even ready for yet. Even though he was an heir of it, he wasn't mature enough to handle it. So he asked his father, he said, give me my inheritance, which comes to me. Now, that wasn't his until the father dies, but, but the father gave it to him. Read the story. He goes out and he spends his money on riotous living, on prostitutes and all kind of foolishness. And in a, in a short time, he's broke. He's in such a, a condition, friend, and frame of state of mind to where well, he he has to he gets a job working slopping hogs and he's so destitute in that position to where he he's so hungry he's even thinking about eating the food friend that he's feeding to the hogs why it's because he didn't have wisdom he didn't have the wisdom what 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 are we talking about when we talk about wisdom you know bishop write things down so i make sure i give you what the lord wants you to have this wisdom is wisdom is discerning the difference between right and wrong wisdom is the ability to appropriately rightly divide the word of truth watch this watch this knowledge is not power it's the ability to understand the knowledge obtained and then properly using the knowledge as an asset in your life and others. The prodigal son couldn't use, couldn't use his assets, uh, uh, couldn't take what he had to use even for himself, let alone others. He didn't even know how to handle money. So he lost the inheritance. And by the grace of God, his father loved him enough to even take him back to even take him back and not just use him as a castaway. And so watch this now because God is talking to us right now about being consistent, friend. Those of us who are consistent, he said consistency is going to qualify you for things that otherwise you wouldn't qualify for. In other words, you don't have to be uh, as articulate as somebody else. You don't have to have as many degrees as somebody else. No, all you get, God just wants some consistency. It's, listen, if he can get some people who, oh, you consistent, so that's, I need somebody who's consistent because watch this now. <laughs> Watch this now, because the lack of consistency, Bishop, write things down, because the lack of consistency, friend, look, is the evidence of a lack of discipline, a lack of discipline, for, friend, watch this, where there's a lack of discipline, there's a lack of obedience, where there's a lack of discipline, there's a lack of obedience, and so obedience is better than sacrifice, First Samuel, come on, I think it's 1522, come on, friend, say that, uh, uh, 
It's better. It's better. Obedience is better, friend. Obedience is better. God is looking for those who are going to obey. Solomon asked for wisdom. Why? Because he want to be obedient to God. He want to be the right kind of king to God's people. We looked at Daniel. We even looked at Daniel and, and how consistent he was even in the face of adversity. Listen, friend, can you be consistent in the face of adversity? Job was consistent in the face of adversity, in the midst of trials and tribulation, in the midst of the world going awry, the world just, just going straight to Hades. Can you stay consistent, friend, in the midst of it all? Because in the midst of it all, Daniel stayed consistent in Daniel chapter 6. He stayed consistent. And so uh, let's go to Daniel chapter 6. Well, let's go to Daniel chapter 6 right quick. I want to show you this because... Because faith coming by hearing, friend, and hearing by the word of God. Daniel chapter 6, we want to look at what it, and we talked about what it looked like to be consistent. And what I love about Daniel chapter 6 is what the king said. It, see, people can tell if you are walking a consistent life with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are consistent in your walk with God. I mean, people can see it. Watch this, friend, because th this, is, this is very important that we see this. Okay. So... So they don't like Daniel. They don't like Daniel because he's got favor with the king. King Darius has a, has a love for, for Daniel. And so they don't like it. They don't like it because, because Daniel is, is, is growing. He's growing uh, in, in his relationship with the king. And they don't like it because Daniel is an outsider, remember? He's an outsider. And so, and so they get the king, they get the king to make a decree that no one can pray to any other God for anything other than the king. The king writes it. They write it. He seals it. Okay, so the only way, they said the only way we're going to find error with Daniel is dealing with his God because they know he's consistent in his walk, in his relationship with God. So Daniel hears what happened. He hears what happened. Write this now. Thank you. Let me, let me look at this because you need to hear this right here. Uh, when you're walking consistent in your walk with God, a person may lie on you, but they really won't be able to find no fault in you. Just like they couldn't find no fault in Jesus, they weren't able to find no fault in him because he was so consistent. We find that over here in, in Daniel chapter 6, verse number 4. In the latter part, it says, For as much as he was faithful, neither were there any error nor fault found in him because he was faithful. That means he was consistent, faithful to his God. He was faithful, but he was also faithful to his king, too, though, friend. He was faithful to his God, but he was also faithful to his king. So when Daniel finds out, watch this, we're going to read verse 8. Look what it says. Now, now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writings that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, uh, which, which altered not. Verse number 9. Wherefore, well, King Darius signed the writings and the decree. Now when Daniel knew, watch this, it, he knew what had happened. He knew the decree had been signed. We're talking about being consistent, friend. We're talking about being consistent now in the midst of adversity, in the midst of adversity, trial and tribulation. Can you say that you're consistent, that you don't waver? Look what it says. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house. Watch this. Watch this. And his window being open, so he didn't hide, he didn't close his door because this is something that he's been doing. He's being a light. He's being salt. Watch this now. And, and his windows being open and his chamber toward Jerusalem. Watch this. He kneeled on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. This is something that he did all the time, say consistent friend. This is something he did all the time, regardless of what the situation was. He did this all the time. Watch this. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Now watch this because I'm going to a verse of the scripture that's, that's powerful because the king knew that he was committed, that he was consistent in his serving God and his faith toward God. Watch this, friend. Watch this, friend. We're going to read. We'll, we're still in Daniel chapter 6, and we're going to read in verse number 16. Then the king commanded that they, watch this, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thou God, whom thou serve continually, he will deliver thee. Watch this now because he's talking about throwing him in the fiery furnace, I mean in the lion's den now, because he won against the decree. So they're going to throw him in into the lion's den. But the king says this. Watch this. Now the king says, Thy God whom thy serve continually, he will deliver thee. 
he will deliver thee. So, so now he's walking in a faith right now. He's operating in a faith right now. Why? Because of the consistency of Daniel with his relationship with God. He's watched God, <clears throat> excuse me, he's watched God perform in Daniel's life because of his consistency. Watch this, watch this. Now let's go down to verse number 20. <clears throat> He's been in the lines then now overnight. The king shows up. He shows up because he want to see if Daniel is still alive. Verse number 20. <clears throat> and when he came, meaning the king, and we came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, watch this, is thy God, watch, is thy God whom thou serve continually, somebody say consistently, friend, he, he say the God that you serve consistently, look, friend, look, friend, look, friend. And the king spake and said unto Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, look what he say, servant of the living God, servant, D Daniel is the only one, him and the Hebrew boys are the only ones they are serving the living God. Everybody else is serving another God. Come on, friend. Everybody else is serving another God. But Daniel and Hebrew boys continue to serve the living God. Watch this. Servant of the living God. Who are you a servant of? Is it the living God? Watch this now. Oh, watch this now. Oh, Daniel, servant of the living God. Is thy God whom thou serve continually, who you consistently serve, able to deliver thee from the lions? able to deliver you. And of course he was because Daniel spoke up. He spoke up in verse 21. Then said Daniel unto the king. We can stop right there because Daniel responded. That let him know, that let the king know that God delivered him from the mouth of the lions. Then Daniel said, then Daniel, then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. O king, live forever. My God have sent his angel. Look at this, friend. My God have sent his angel and have shut the lion's mouth that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocence was found in me. Of course, because they didn't even find no fault in him. Come on, friend. They didn't find no fault in him. So if there was no fault in him, how could God find fault in him? Okay. Watch this now. For as much as before him innocence was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. So I didn't wish no evil or no bad on you. This is being consistent. Daniel is consistent. Are you consistent, friend? The question is, are you consistent when it comes to the trials and the tribulations? Because listen, friend, listen, Bishop, Bishop, I'm going to be honest with you. There's been times, friend, when I had to catch myself, when I had to catch myself and say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's not God. You know God better than that. Why are you responding like that? That's not God. God promised never to leave you nor forsake or fail you. Why are you acting like that right now? I had to catch myself. Friend, I had to catch myself. It's been times, right? Because none of us are perfect. There's going to be a situation. There's going to be circumstances that's going to come in your life that's going to shake you. And so, but, but consistency, friend, Jesus was consistent. So when he's in the garden of Gethsemane, friend, when his flesh rose up and said, is it possible that you can remove this cup? His spirit man rose up and said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. His flesh wanted the cup to pass, but the spirit in him, the spirit in him said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Consistency, friends. See, consistency will cause you to snap out of it. It will cause you to respond to foolishness, friend. Consistency. I teach my congregation this all the time. I say, listen, you need to practice being obedient to God. Excuse me. Practice being obedient to God. Practice being faithful to God. I say because the day is going to come to where you're going to have to make a decision quickly. And if you've been obedient, if you've been consistent in your walk with God, trust me, friend, when that day comes, because you're rehearsing for a big moment, every day is a rehearsal for a big moment that's going to come in your life. That's why you have to be consistent, friend. So when God approaches you and God asks you a question, you can respond correctly to God. Not only that, because you got to be able to respond. You got to be able to respond correctly to the devil as well, friend. You got to be able to respond correctly to the devil. Jesus was able to respond correctly to the devil because he was consistent in his walk with God. 
So he told when anytime the devil says something, Jesus will say, no, this is what's written. And again, I say this is what's written. Why? Because he was consistent for him. You have to become consistent in your walk with God, consistent in your study, consistent in your prayer time and even fasting when God requires it for him, because some things only go out by prayer and fasting. You got to become consistent, friend. <clears throat> so when the day that's approaching comes and it will come, just like COVID snuck up on you, even though God had us to say it, that it was coming, something was coming. This thing that's coming, friend, if you're not consistent, if you're not consistent, you're going to get caught up in it. You're going to get caught up in it. Just like Lot's wife. They come out of Sodom and Gomorrah, but she hadn't left. Her body was gone, but her mind, her heart was still in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so she looked back and she became a pillar of salt, just like God said it would happen. Friend, if you're not really out of that world, friend, that world will suck you right on back out there. But if you go back out there, it's because you never left. See, she left Sodom and Gomorrah, but her heart was there. Her body was out, but her heart, her love was for Sodom and Gomorrah. So she couldn't help but look back, friend, listen. It is what it is, friend. Consistency, consistency, friend, is what prepares you, is what's, is what's going to separate you from the rest. Consistency will separate you from the rest. When things happen, God is going to put us, listen, he said it's going to be a time, watch this, it's going to be a time of fruitfulness, friend. It's going to be a time of elevation, friend. Watch, while, while people are, while the Down Jones is down and Wall Street and everything is, is going to rise, the people of God who are consistent are going to flourish and they're going to an increase a thousand times more according to Deuteronomy 1.11, I think it is, 11.1, a thousand times more, a thousand times more, friend. So, so we want to make sure that we position ourselves, we posture ourselves in a way to where when this thing happened that God is talking about, friend, we won't be left behind. We won't be left out. We won't be drawn back into that world. Consistency is the key. Consistency is the key. What is the key to? It's the key to the success, to the success of the believer. There's no victory where there's no Consistency. There can be no overcoming. There can be no breakthrough where there is no consistency. You got to be able to stick to it, stay with it, hold fast to it, friend. We're talking about the Word of God. We're talking about the Word of God. We're talking about the will and the way of God. Please, friend, listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now. Get ready because it's coming. It's coming, friend. This thing, this move of God, this move of God is coming, friend. Nothing we can do to stop it. Just like it was nothing we could do to stop COVID, it showed up. This thing is going to show up, friend. And those of us who are consistent, friend, are going to benefit. At that time, things are going to happen to where it's going to, watch this, it's going to give God glory and draw people out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. I got I to gotta wind down now, but I thank you for allowing me time in your life today space in your life today. I want to ask you again to continue to pray for KPLE, continue to pray uh, God's will and, and your giving. Help me to continue to help them. I love you to life and thank you so very much for everything, friend. Until next time, bye-bye, friend. Bye-bye. Whatever you want, I'll do it. Lord, whatever you want, I'll give it. Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll say to whatever, whatever, whatever.